Hi, I'm Dr. Abdullah Abiyat. I've been asked to examine your nose today. Would that be all right? Yeah, that's fine. Can I just check if you've had any breathing problems? No. Any change in the sensation of your smell? No. Excellent. And your name and your date of birth? Hannah Perlman, the 11th of January, 91. Excellent. Just gel my hands here. So first of all, I'm just going to look straight down your nose, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. If I just come across to the side. And from the other side. And can I get you to tilt your head back slightly? Okay, that's fine. Now what I'm going to do is just to occlude each nostril. And if you could just breathe in and out for me. And again. Excellent. At this point, we'd use some smelling salts as well to test your sensation of smell. I'll just have a look up the nose, okay? Okay. Not in any pain at all? No. That's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's review the examination of the nose. Again, it's important to introduce yourself, make sure you have the correct patient, they're not in any pain, they don't have any smelling problems, and they don't have any breathing problems. You'd start with gelling your hands and inspection. On inspection, it's important to get three views. First is the anterior view, and you're looking for the light running down the side of the nose. This suggests that the septum is straight and the patient does not have a deviated nose. You'd also have a lateral view and a lateral view from the other end. You'd then ask the patient to tilt the head up slightly so that you can have a look in theory. From all these views, you're trying to assess the anatomy of the nose. Does it look like a normal nose, essentially? You gauge this by the tip, the dorsum of the nose, and the top of the lips. Next, you get the patient to breathe in and out through either nostril. And the other side. Here you're assessing that there's good patency of each nostril. You're also looking to see if there's any alar collapse. This is the side of the nose here, which would collapse if the patient had any structural weakness. Finally, you would use a nasal speculum and a light source. It's important to hold the nasal speculum in the correct fashion. Using your index finger, you have the nasal speculum rest on it as so. Use the middle finger and the ring finger to get a good grasp of it and letting it release within the nostril. You would then use an appropriate light source, such as a head torch or a simple pen torch. It's important that you get a good view of the nose. You're looking for the inferior and middle turbinates. You're also looking for any polyps or any septal deviation that you can see on the inside of the nose. And finally, if you have smelling salts available, make sure to test the smell sensation in both nostrils, which is testing for olfactory nerve, and complete the examination by thanking the patient. If the patient was to have a nosebleed and you couldn't control this conservatively, there's a few tools you can use. If you can see a point of bleeding within the nose, you'd use a silver nitrate stick. The tip of the silver nitrate stick will cauterize the blood vessel within the nose. You would work in a circular fashion around the blood vessel until it stopped bleeding. If this didn't control the bleeding, you would use a rhino pack. Now rhino packs come in different sizes and they can come in a single or dual rhino pack. This is what we consider an anterior rhino pack due to its short size. If it were longer, it'd be a posterior rhino pack. This is in relation to whether the bleeding is in the anterior portion of the nose or in the posterior portion of the nose. You would wet the end of the rhino pack in some saline or water and then place this straight through into the patient's nose, all the way back, not aiming up, 
not aiming down, all the way back. Once the rhino pack is fully inserted in, you would fill the balloon with 5 to 10 mils of air, judging by how much the patient can tolerate. If this did not stop the bleeding, you would then use a larger posterior rhino pack. If this did not stop the bleeding, you would use a dual rhino pack, which is very similar to this, but you would have a left and a right nostril rhino pack. If you do not have a dual rhino pack, then you can use two singular rhino packs, one in either nostril. Finally, if this did not stop the bleeding, you are calling the ENT registrar as this patient will most likely need surgery to stop the bleeding.